Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have numerous thunderstorm and rain warnings over the course of this weekend as we are going to continue to see quite a lot of thunderstorm activity and we could see more widespread torrential rain through Sunday and Monday. We'll have a look at that in detail on the latest UKV and a Rome runs looking at the precipitation over the coming days. And then we'll finish the video by having a look at some of the longer range charts for the final 10 days or so of September. Because once the thunderstorms clear over the next few days, we'll have a brief lull potentially on Tuesday with showers, but nothing too much. But by Wednesday and Thursday, we could see a really strong area of low pressure develop, pushing in from the west, bringing widespread heavy rain, strong winds. And then into the weekend, once that low pulls out into the North Sea, it could bring some some very cold air on its back edge uh, as we do start to see a proper northerly flow starting to develop so lots going on over the next week or so from summery thundery conditions at the moment to unsettled cold autumnal or wintry conditions come next weekend so do remember if you enjoy the videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now, if we start on the live radar, you can see we have got quite a lot of thunderstorm activity through today, especially across parts of England and Wales. Now, we've got this sort of line of storms across much of the Midlands in towards central parts of Wales. It did originate further southwards and eastwards, sort of clearing to the south of London, slowly heading northwards and westwards. And it has increased in size and intensity over the past couple of hours. I'm recording this around half three in the afternoon, so we are starting now to reach peak activity activity for the day wouldn't be surprised to see more storms develop across the south of this region uh, but you can see where the main activity is at the moment as ever with thunderstorms especially when we've got these large warnings and it's quite a lot of scattered pop-up storms like we're seeing here it is impossible to say exactly where they will occur we can say with quite a lot of confidence that there will be thunderstorms around and they will be pretty severe but it's impossible to say where they will occur if you are in the midlands at the moment you're probably being hammered by some of these storms if you go to the south of this the east or even to the southwest you're probably saying what thunderstorms and some of these areas are under a thunderstorm warning it's just the issue we get with convection it is impossible to pinpoint the exact location and severity because the forecast we've put out of the last couple of days and the weather warnings we've been it have been issued by the met office been pretty accurate as we are seeing quite a lot of activity in this region through the afternoon you can see where we're avoiding the thunderstorms at the moment it is still pretty warm we still got a warm air mass in place and that's fueling the storms but still giving temperatures into the low 20s or even mid 20s across east anglia across the parts of southern england and to the north of those thunderstorms through england uh, as well it's still warm across scotland northern Ireland, and the republic of Ireland, but it will start to cool down over the next couple of days as we start to see that westerly influence return I also do want to have a look at the past 24 hour precipitation. If you saw yesterday's video, we did see that line of storms just to the south of London heading north and westwards, and we've still got quite a lot of activity in this area. And that's because we saw further storms last night and through the morning. And you can see it's all drifting in this region uh, as that's kind of the extent of the instability with that trough. But the trough is heading northwards at the moment. And that is why those th storms are slightly further northwards now across the Midlands. And that's why we'll see more widespread rain across southern England through Sunday. Now, if you go over to NetWeather, have a look at the live radar here. It's very similar. Of course, it's the exact same data. But we can see the lightning on this chart. And you can see the line of storms through the Midlands at the moment. See the blues and purples, that's in the last hour or so. And then the oranges and reds are in the last 10 or 20 minutes. So lots of active thunderstorms. And you can see they are heading southwards to northwards at the moment. So each of these crosses is an individual detectable lightning strike. Not all lightning strikes are detected, but you can see generally where the activity is at the moment. I said we are expecting more activity to the south of this through the rest of the evening into Sunday, but at the moment, not too much going on there. Now, if you go over to the weather warnings, we can see the thunderstorm warning is issued at the moment. You see, much of this warning area doesn't actually have any thunderstorms. Uh, it could still pop off later this evening, and some of these regions have seen storms earlier through the morning. But you can see the broad warning was uh, for thunderstorms developing 
within this region. So if you are towards Cornwall, for example, you've not seen much at all, um, even though there is a the, the same warning issued here. Again, it's just the nature of these storms. Uh, again, this has uh, been updated this morning just to extend further north and eastwards whilst removing southeast England and to increase the likelihood to low. So it's got increasing that warning, but again, it's probably not going to change at all throughout the rest of today. And again, these exact details haven't changed too much. 20 to 40 millimetres in less than an hour or so, maybe 50 to 80 millimetres in a few hours. And you can see through the afternoon and evening, it's Midlands, West England and East Wales that could see the most intense storms. Um, and that's kind of exactly what we're seeing at the moment. If we put back on the radar, uh, you can see it is exactly the West Midlands into eastern parts of Wales, that is exactly where we are seeing the most activity right now. So pretty accurate there from the Met Office warnings. Now, as we head into Sunday and into Monday, we've got these big blanket rain warnings for the full 24 hours of the day. Again, we're not gonna see torrential rain all day, but for much of the day, there is a pretty high risk. Uh, and you can see it's areas of heavy rain will bring disruption on Sunday. Showers and thunderstorms are expected to merge into broader areas of heavy rain across parts of Wales, central and southern England. 30 to 50 millimetres in six hours or less, maybe 60 to 80 millimetres across, uh, across the full day. Again, it is a rain warning um, and it was issued yesterday, so it's not been updated, uh, but it probably will be updated at some point through this evening or early tomorrow morning. So it hasn't been updated. We looked at this detail in yesterday's video, but I do just want to stress, even though it is a rain warning, that is the main impact. Doesn't mean though that it's just going to be rain. There will likely be thunderstorms within this. It's just the most impact um, that we'll to see from all of this will be the high rainfall totals. Whereas today, for example, we're not seeing widespread rain, high rainfall totals localized, yes, but it's more from the lightning uh, and just those immediate hazards. Whereas this is more of a widespread potential flash flooding uh, issues. And, and just generally lots and lots of widespread heavy rain. And the same can be said for Monday. We've got a similar warning uh, stretching slightly further eastwards here across much of the uh, much of England, uh, covering more of northern England, eastern England, and the far south as well. And it's for the full 24 hours of Monday. Uh, it has been into, put into force today. And you can see it again, it is medium impact and low likelihood. Again, there's a possibility this could be upgraded to amber somewhere, but I think that will be a now cast change if that does happen. Again, we're looking at 30, 50 millimeters in any part of the warning in under six hours, maybe 80 to 100 millimeters, maybe even more across the few days of this week, uh, 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 coming off the back of the weekend. I do look at the latest UKV now, we'll be able to look at that, all of this in detail. You can see the heavy rain, thunderstorms developing through this afternoon across much of the Midlands through this evening. You can see the UKV has it slightly further westwards than it is in reality. Again, that's always going to happen with these highly convective events. You can see through this evening, a few more storms could break out around 10, 11 p.m. And really activity looks like it's going to pick up through the early hours. More in the form of heavy showers than just explicitly thunderstorms, but there still will likely be thunderstorms within this. And then you can see it could be very active through the morning, picking up during the afternoon with lots of heavy scattered showers, forming into longer spells of rain as well. And that's why those rainfall toasts could really toss up. And then through Sunday evening into Monday, a longer spell of heavy torrential rain with lots of yellows, oranges, and reds developing there through parts of the Midlands, spiraling, pivoting on its axis before clearing into Tuesday morning. So lots of heavy rain to come. Exact positioning still subject to change, but these are the rough areas we're seeing at the moment. As we head through the rest of Tuesday, there's a bit of a lull, still some showers around, but nothing too much. But then into Wednesday, look at what comes in from the west. We start to see heavy rain for western areas through Wednesday afternoon, and it's really through Wednesday evening into Thursday morning, we see this big clump of torrential rain heading in from the southwest. Again, we can only look at the three hour frames here, but you can see this huge wall of torrential rain heading up from southwest England, pushing through all areas and slowly clearing further northwards. As said, it is gonna pivot on its axis under this low pressure system. But from the looks of the long range charts, this low should hopefully clear eastwards through Thursday afternoon. 
So we're not expecting this to drag into Friday, which sometimes can occur with these low pressure systems, but really heavy rain. And the reason for this heavy rain is the huge clash in air masses. The warm air we've got at the moment still fueling up from the south, but very colder heads out away. And into the next sort of 24 hours after this, the cold air plunges southwards. And we do see very cold conditions for all as we head through Friday, Saturday, even into Sunday. Now, if you look at the max temperatures, you can see through this afternoon, still looking at low 20s, still very warm. Of course, still got warm air around. And you can see into Sunday, still could be warm in places, but with more widespread heavy rain, it's less likely in most regions. Still 22 degrees possible, though. Into Monday, we start to see cooler air pushing in, but still could see a 20 or 21. And then into Tuesday, we're all starting to get into fresher air. High teens are best, most low teens or even single digits. And then look at what happens into Wednesday. Cold air starts to move in from the north. Frosts for Northern England, Northern Ireland and Scotland. And by Wednesday afternoon, it's 17 degrees in the southeast, only seven or eight further northwards. Uh, and then into, as we head into Thursday evening, still 17 in the far southeast. Look at that. Single digits or low single digits for many in the north as it does start to turn pretty cold indeed on the backside of that low. Now, do you just want to have a look at those thunderstorms in a little bit more detail on the latest Arome run? You can see the thunderstorms heading through this afternoon. Arome doing a pretty good job there, uh, maybe slightly further west, uh, further westwards than in reality, but still pretty similar. And you still, still see lots of activity even at 7 p.m. here in the evening. So the next few hours, still plenty of activity is looking likely. And then as we head into Sunday, more widespread, heavy, thundery rain heads up from the south through the early hours of the morning, and then slowly pivots from further northwards, and yet looks torrential as we head through much of Sunday. Again, the main impact area is likely to be further westwards, but it could transition further eastwards as we head through Sunday into Monday. We are looking at a lot of rainfall. If we put it on the accumulated precipitation here, see much of the warning areas we've got at the moment, we'll see about an inch of rain, maybe two or three inches across parts of the West Midlands, Southwest England, and parts of central Wales. Really, those eastern to central parts of Wales could get smashed, not only seeing some of the heaviest rain just in terms of convection, but of course, being over higher ground, there's always, always going to be that higher chance of higher rainfall rates because of the additional effect of relief rainfall. So yeah, could be really quite horrible indeed. Said if you are to the north and east of this at the moment, not showing too much rain here through Sunday evening, maybe five to 10 millimeters, but that rainfall totals will likely increase significantly as that rain pivots further eastwards into Monday. Now, do you just finish up by having a look at the long range charts? I know I focus on the short range charts quite a lot, but, but we'll go through these quite quickly. Again, in the next couple of days, the main focus will be on that heavy rain through Wednesday and Thursday and the cold air coming in behind it. But it's still a little bit uh, too far away and we've got the immediate impacts of storms to look at as well. But you can see that low uh, that was bringing that rain at the moment, that trough, slowly clears to our east. We do start seeing northerly winds pushing in behind this low that develops through Thursday. That clears quite quickly into the North Sea and leaves us under those very cold northerly winds through Friday into Saturday where it gets cut off through the weekend. Beyond that, it does go very mixed with oscillating high pressure, low pressure, but we're seeing lots of mixed signals in those longer terms. So to be honest, beyond that cold air moving in through the weekend, eventually getting cut off, I wouldn't be taking much from these runs at all. You can see, though, it is turning very cold through Friday into Saturday. Minus five isotherm moves in. Temperature deviation, eight to 10 degrees below average. And you see this emphasized with those potential equivalent temperatures, which looks very chilly indeed. Now, if you look at the latest GM for comparison, you can see again that trough heading up from the south at the moment. That low pressure clears. And then we see that real significant low arriving through Wednesday into Thursday. Again, it should hopefully clear by Friday, leaving a north and northwesterly flow and eventually gets cut off by some higher pressure into the following week. And then there is massive uncertainty here. It does start to pull up a northerly wind with very warm air but equally other runs not showing much at all. So still a lot to be decided for those first few days of October. 
and then finally compared to the east and blue F, again that trough heading up from the south eventually that significant lower rise through wednesday to thursday clears quite quickly leaving a normal wind for friday and then eventually it turns a little bit better into the following week with a southerly flow but again low pressure trying to push off the atlantic keeping it unsettled now if you finish by looking at the ensembles you can see still warm at the moment but trending cooler lots of rain in the next couple of days and then it turns very cold for a time later next week about five to ten degrees below average for many before it does recover back towards average into early october but remains pretty unsettled so yeah it's been pretty summery the last week or so after that very cold spell in the prior week but it does look like we're going to see further colder conditions and then a general shift to proper autumnal conditions to end september and start october and we've got a similar picture here from the ECMWF ensembles, where it is pretty much exactly the same, the precipitation chart in terms of temperatures, um, sorry, the, uh, the temperature lines here look exactly the same, looking well below average later next week, then back towards average, and the precipitation spikes are broadly very similar, uh, being pretty high for the foreseeable future. So yeah, lots of impact pool conditions coming over the next couple of weeks. Lots to keep a very close eye on. But for the time being, do stay safe. Now, all of that heavy torrential rain over the next sort of 48 hours or so. And then our focus will shift to that heavy rain potentially through Wednesday to Thursday. And then the subsequent colder air. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.